Good afternoon and welcome to A Moment in the Word here at New Beginnings House of Worship. We thank you for coming and being a part of our Bible study. Uh, we're going to uh, get into God's Word to see what He has for us. And we encourage you that if you're on and uh, you tag your friends and tell them to come on as we get into God's Word to hear what He has to say to us this day. Uh, we encourage you also that if you have questions as we go through it, put them in the chat and and uh, we can address those as we go through. Anything that's going on in your life that maybe we haven't touched base on, make sure you uh, let us know that and we can make sure that we uh, fulfill those needs. This morning, uh, before we get started, we all want to say thank you to all of you that sent out well wishes to me. My birthday was yesterday, March 8th, and we thank you for those blessings. We, this is my first time being 67. It's a new experience. And I'm liking it. <laughs> Actually, I'm loving it. And so we thank you for that. And I want to send out a happy birthday to my niece, uh, Nicole Holmes Dockery in Memphis. She has uh, had her birthday today. Her birthday is today. So we thank God for her. And we shall get into what God has for us right now. Um, and all of you that are celebrating March birthdays, there are many others out there uh, shared birthday with me. And, and even during this month of March, God bless you. So today's message is going to come from Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 1 through 4, 1 through 5, 1 through 5. Exodus chapter 3, 1 through 5. I'm going to read from the King James Version or whatever version of the Bible you have. Make sure you keep that out and we can go through and hear what God has to say to us all. Amen. Exodus chapter 3, um, beginning at verse 1, says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord <clears throat> appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him uh, out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Amen. And so we're just going to use that bit of that pass passage this morning for our um, Bible study. And we're going to title this Bible study message, Living in the Presence of God living in the presence of God. And so as we look into this message, um, there's a lot going on before. Uh, if you know the story of Moses' life, uh, he was living with Pharaoh in Egypt. Uh, his family had already uh, sent him away as a little child, and he lived with Pharaoh for approximately 40 years of his life because they were trying to kill the young children, and his mother put him in the, in the river in a uh, bull rush and uh, sent him on out. And Pharaoh's daughter found him, lived there. Then he killed a man because he saw an Egyptian abusing uh, the Hebrew children. And he killed a man and buried him in the sand. But he was found out, somebody saw and, and revealed it. Don't you know the things that we do, whether some a man or, or woman on earth sees it or not, God sees it all. And so now Moses was uh, ran out. He, he left Egypt because Pharaoh uh, was going to, uh, he was afraid of what Pharaoh would do. He left and ran out. And so now the next 40 years of his life, he's out in the wilderness. He comes upon um, these ladies feeding, their, watering their sheep. And uh, he, they took him in and uh, he married one of Jethro's daughter. He was a uh, king of Midian. Uh, uh, he was leading a, a tribe in Midian. And so now we find Moses after 40 years on the run, having this experience in this Exodus chapter 3. And so we want to just stop for a moment and deal with that concept there and deal with those issues. Because some of us are running from some things, and we've been running for a long time. Um, living in the presence of God. We know, number one, that God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. There's no place we can go to get away from him. Uh, it's written that if I made my bed in hell, you thou out there. 
Where can I escape to get away from you? If I run to the highest heights, where can I go? You're there. Uh, and so we can't get away from God, number one, no matter what, how we run. Jonah knows that. Uh, and so Moses had to run and flee. And so now he's out here in the wilderness, but God has something for him to do. And I want you to understand that God has something for all of us to do. It may not be to lead a group of people out of bondage. Maybe it's one person in prison that you need to go visit. Maybe it's one person in the hospital that you need to go visit. Maybe it's somebody in your own family that's going through some things and everybody's written them off because, you know, they've, they've done some things and they've hurt and damaged some relationships. Maybe you're the one to restore that. Whatever that ministry is, that whatever that calling that God has on your life, don't run forever from it. Some of us have an, an idea that God is calling us to do something, we're not really sure, or maybe once we figure out that that's what you want me to do, no, I'm not going to do it. I, I can't do that. And we get to running from God. And so some of us are actually trying to get some things accomplished. And Lord, I, I want to establish this. I want to do this ministry. And God is saying, yes, but at my time, and, and in my own time, you will be able to do that. And so sometimes we get a little anxious, a little antsy, and we're trying to do some things uh, and to get that thing started. And God is saying, hold on, I need you to learn some things first. Moses, when he left and ran away, he didn't just run off and just become a desert bum. <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't just go run away and hide and stay under a bush and hit, hide away. It says in this first verse of chapter three, now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. He was busy. He was learning patience. He was learning some things in these 40 years because he's going to have to be very patient for the task that's before him. What is that task that God has for you? If you're going to live in the presence of God, you need to recognize what God is saying to you and when he's saying to you to do it. Don't rush, don't rush the process. And while you're waiting and while you're being uh, in this holding pattern, see, the interesting thing about a holding pattern is not just that you sit there and wait. You have to do something in the meantime. You have to make sure the plane, if it's a plane, uh, if it's in a holding pattern, they still have to make sure that all of the, the instrument panels are, and the readings are, are right. Uh, they're going to get a, a message uh, when they can actually take off or when they can land, uh, but they're still watching and monitoring all of the, the uh, signals in, on the plane. And so you have to do the same thing. God is preparing you. What are you doing in the meantime to prepare yourself? How closer are you getting to God? How much time are you spending in his word, reading, to understand what he's saying to you so that you will be strengthened when it's your time to step up and do what God has you to do? See, if you wait and wait and wait for the time to start and until everything is in place before you actually do something, you'll never really be successful at what God has for you. You know, there are people who see um, entrepreneurs, we see uh, people in the music industry and uh, football or whatever sports, and we think that they just went out there and just started and did it on their own and got going and, and didn't have to put any time in to prepare themselves. There may be a few people that can start something without having to do a lot of preparation, but those people, they, they learn and once they get in it, they have to really crank it up and start preparing themselves where they are. They have to go beyond just their own natural ability to be able to do the things that they need to do. And so it takes some preparation. So that's the first thing. And if you're going to live in the presence of God, you need to be preparing yourself on a daily basis for what God has in store for you. If you're going to live out the plans of God for your life, and you have to learn to live in God's presence. In God's presence, you have to do the thing that God is asking you to do. You're living in, in, your, in your children. You're living when we were child, uh, a child. <laughs> and we were living with our parents and uh, growing up. We had to do what our parents asked us to do. Yeah, some of us rebelled. Yeah, there are times when we did some things that they told us not to do. And we had to deal with those, the consequences of those things. 
but they, our parents were preparing us to be able to live a life on our own. And so God, uh, the first thing again, being prepared. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And so he, this is a place where God has been known to come and show up. And so now we know that God is not just um, out there in the ether, way out there, but he is ever present with us. When God comes into our lives we recognize what well, let's 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 understand that phrase there come into our lives uh, because here's the thing god is in all of our lives he knows us he's he's there giving us opportunities to do the things that and make right decisions uh, to be trained up right and then to be able to, when we come into our own, to be able to do things on our own. Now, we know that God's presence, and we consider God's presence His Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit, um, in, in Old Testament times, his, old, his Spirit did not dwell in man, but it was all around. Okay? And so when you, the, the symbolism of the smoke and all of those things was the presence of God, His Spirit, His presence. Uh, being led by a cloud by day and pillar of, fly, <laughs> pillar of fire by night, uh, the presence of God, his spirit. And so now with Jesus' death and resurrection, the Holy Spirit is here now. And so He, the Holy Spirit dwells in us now. So when I say that, I, I want to make sure we understand that concept and don't get uh, confused on some things. And so when we are in the presence of God and he's always with us, whether you have been saved and you've accepted Christ and the spirit may not be dwelling in you, but God's presence is all around. He's everywhere. He knows all things. And so don't think that you can get away with something just because um, you haven't accepted the Holy Spirit. And so here Moses is coming to the mountain of God. Yeah, he, and they call it that because of the experience that Moses had there. And then later on, the children of Israel, uh, the Hebrew children, when they, they come out of Egypt, they're going to come to this mountain. And so it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. God will get your attention. When it is time for you to do that thing that God has for you, the new thing that God's going to do in your life. When God is ready to, uh, uh, to speak to you and give you the message and the, uh, the plans that he has for you, uh, you need to be ready and, and, and listen clearly to what he's saying. God used the burning bush, and we call it the burning bush, even though the bush didn't burn. <laughs> we need to be clear about that. It was a fire that was consuming the bush, meaning it was all around the bush, but the bush itself did not burn. That fire is the presence of God. And so when Moses saw that, God got his attention. When he, his attention was given to the thing that was going on, Moses paid attention. And look at what it says that God says. Uh, when he, verse 2, let's look at that again in verse 3. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire, out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Verse 3, And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And so his attention was gathered. They, they, they saw, Moses saw what was going on and was experiencing uh, what was happening in, in, in this uh, miraculous event and so now what do you do when god gets your attention how do you pay attention to what god is saying to you do you recognize everybody doesn't have a burning bush experience but god has a way of getting your attention are you paying attention to those things that god is doing in your life are you aware when God says, all right, pay attention to me? Look at this. Or do we write it off? So not only do you need to prepare yourself 
for what God is about to do in your life, you need to also be very attentive. If you are really preparing yourself and listening and having an intimate relationship with God, getting closer to him, when he speaks to you, you will know exactly what he's saying. When that sign comes to you that this is the time, you don't have to wonder. You don't have to fret about the things that's going on. And then look what he says in verse 4. And when the Lord saw, that, and we can just stop right there. When the Lord saw, God is constantly looking at, on, over all of us and the things that are going on in our lives, the things that we do, how we respond. Don't think that because you're going through some things and that seem difficult, that God doesn't know what's going on in your life. That God isn't aware of what's happening. That God is not give, uh, attentive to your needs. Now, does that mean that when God is attentive to our needs, that he's going to take care of every situation and take us out of things? No. God places, God allows things to occur in our lives to strengthen us. If you're going to live in the presence of God, you need to understand, number one, that God is all-powerful. He's omnipotent. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's nothing in, the, uh, in me and of myself, in the flesh, that can do anything. I don't care how many books I read, how many degrees I have, how much experience I have doing this, that, or the other. God is the one that will make the difference. And that's what we have to recognize. And so it says in verse 4, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, when Moses gave attention to this thing, and he didn't just turn to look and say, oh, a bush is burning, oh, let's go put the bush out. Uh, bushes burn in the desert all the time, don't worry about it. But he gave attention to it. Yes, sometimes those, those bushes will, tumbleweeds or uh, different things in the desert, sometimes they catch fire and they, they will burn. But he noticed something different about this. Do you notice the distinctive things that God is doing in your life? That yes, bushes may burn, may catch on fire, but I've never seen a bush, bush catch on fire and not get consumed. That's a signal that God is speaking to you. God is trying to get your attention about something. There's some things happening in your life and you, you are about to be evicted. And all of a sudden, you get the notice that you have another month's extension because it's been paid. They found an error, or this happened. And see, we think when they say that we found an error, oh, see, I knew I did something right. God stepped in. And we don't understand how God steps in sometimes. And sometimes we think it's all because of something we did right. And that may be, but God's power. Because most times, <laughs> people will still go on and evict you if they really want to get you out of that, that property. Or whatever your situation may be. We're using that as an, an example. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, Moses said, there's something going on. I need to pay attention. And see, here's the other thing. Sometime in our lives, we may be a part of the church. When something goes on and we leave the church or maybe they tell us to leave <laughs> and we say we don't want to have anything with that anymore. And so when we say stuff like that, we don't hear God. We don't recognize the burning bushes in our lives because we've already written off God. God will get your attention and you will know that God is speaking. What, how will you respond, though? And yes, there are some things that happen in our lives, in the flesh, that are unsettling to us. Now, Moses did something, and then his fear caused him to run away. Sometimes things happen, and we didn't do anything. Maybe we're falsely accused. Maybe everybody's saying these things about me, and I'm tired of hearing that, especially in the church. And so whatever experience you've had with, with, the, with a religious setting uh, and you want to uh, give that to God and say that God did this to me, no. Understand that man will do some, some terrible things at times. But we have to hold firm and give, uh, understand what God is doing, 
what God will allow in our lives and not attribute because the scripture tells that God says clearly that I do not tempt man with evil. God doesn't tempt us to do something evil. And God is not a God that gets mad with us and says, I'm going to treat you this way, unlike the way I treat anybody else because you did this to me. God says, I have already told you what you need to do, and I told you the consequences. Now, if you decide to do something and come out of the will of God, and God's already explained to you the consequences, and he has in his word, then you fall prey to those things. Living in the presence of God, you need to, number one, prepare yourself for that which God has coming your way. You need to be diligent in preparing yourself and, and seeking a close relationship with God. And you need to recognize when God speaks. Because if you're preparing yourself, you'll be ready. And when God speaks and shows up in your life, you need to turn and see what God is saying. And so it says, uh, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And how do you respond when God calls? Do you say, oh, I'm at home? Just a minute ago, our doorbell kept ringing. Somebody was at the door. Uh, and <laughs> I guess they assume nobody's here now, so they stop. And sometimes we do that when we don't want to... Uh, we don't want to be interrupted or we think it's somebody trying to sell something and we may tell everybody to be quiet and don't, don't, don't answer the door. When God comes calling, God doesn't have to go to the front door and ring a doorbell. God will show up. And when he shows up, and you need to make sure that you answer his call. And again, when I say he shows up, he's ever present. But when he gets our attention to let us know that I have something for you, are you paying attention? And so if Moses' response was, here am I. Are you ready to say, here am I, after you've been running? You've left 40 years, and now you're not sure what's going on. You're not sure why this is happening to you. Yes, I made a mistake, but why is it taking so long? Whatever your situation is, if you're going to live a prosperous life you need to do it in the presence of God and so when you're in the presence of God there's a certain way you behave a certain way you carry yourself look at it in verse 5 and we'll be concluding here verse 5 says at the Moses said here am I God called to him and he said here am I and he said draw not nigh hither put off thy shoes from off thy feet for the place where thou standest is holy ground when you're living in the presence of God, and we all are, you need to make sure that you come before God correctly. Whatever that is in your life. In this particular text, um, there's nothing else that describes why that in particular that gives a, a declaration as to take off your shoes because the shoes, this, that, or the other. But it's believed by most scholars and commentators that um, the shoes uh, being made of leather was a dead animal, and so nothing dead needs to be standing on the ground of God. What are the dead things in your life? What are those things that uh, are dead and dying in your life? Those things that bring death, those things that does not, uh, uh, that, <laughs> that isn't alive. His, when he takes his shoes off, he's on his bare feet. And his feet are still alive. Because he's alive. Okay, yeah, that, that's obvious, preacher. And so God is saying, get rid of the dead stuff before you come before me. As you come to me because I have called on you, if there's some things in your life that you need to get right. Now, we really have to pause here again. Because we tell everybody, come as you are. That you can't get yourself clean before you uh, give your life to God. And that is very, very true. We come and give those things to God, and God removes that from our life. And so then we accumulate some things as we go through life. And sometimes we accumulate some things that don't mean us any good. 
We associate with people that's leading us down a path of death and destruction. They're doing all sorts of things. Well, I don't really do that, the stuff they do. We hang out together, and we go here, and we do this together. But when they do that, I go on. But they're constantly doing it. They're saying things around you. They bring those things around you. You are in that presence. That spirit is around you, and you need to be aware. And I know we don't like to, we don't talk about this very much, but the spirit of evil <laughs> God wants us in his presence because he is the spirit of life. When mankind found out about evil, when he ate of the knowledge of the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, evil became present around man in a place that God had created where there was none. And so we have we have to make sure we understand that. And I know we don't like to talk about evil spirits and this, that. You're talking about the boogeyman and this. And no, we're not going crazy boogeyman style. But we're, it's, it's bigger than that. But you need to understand that there are evil spirits. And you need to not be in that area, in that environment. Some places you go, you just don't need to go anymore. Some things you used to do, you don't need to do them anymore. God is speaking to him. He says, take your shoes off before you come in my presence. And that doesn't mean that you have to, when you go to church, you have to take your shoes off and all of that. We understand what God is saying to him beyond shoes. This is not a matter of shoes. This is a matter of things in his life. And with all that he had on, there was one thing that he needed to remove before he comes into to the holiest place that he could be. And that's what God is saying to us. So if we're going to live in the presence of God, we need to make sure that we come as holy beings before God. I'm not telling you to take off your shoes every place you go when you feel God around you and take off your belt because it's made of leather and your leather this and your leather that and there anything else. Uh, no, we're not getting into that. This, this was a symbolic thing that was happening and it, it was a real thing. Uh, and God is saying, get that out. And that symbolizes things that are dead in our lives. What are those dead things that you need to get rid of? If you're going to live in the presence of God, you have to know that those things can't be in the presence of God. You can't be holding to those, those ideas, that ideology that may have you believing this about God. I was talking with some, a friend of mine, and he was telling me about some things that he had been listening to and, and hearing. And sometimes people uh, say some things that contradict the word of God. And they'll have someone reading the scripture and say, well, that's not what that means. This is what it means. And so we have to be careful when we're trying to interpret what God meant. And we all do it as preachers because that's, the, that's, that's what we do. Uh, but we have to make sure it lines up with what God's word is. When we take God's word and say, it didn't mean that uh, you have to love everybody. It didn't mean that this sin is really a sin, sin unto death. No, you can do these things and still be okay because God will forgive you and all of this. But what if you never ask for forgiveness? <laughs> Don't you know that there are the people in the Bible and Matthew when it talks about God saying, and he has separated the sheep from the goat and people say, Lord, Lord. And he says, I knew you not. I never knew you. I don't know who you are because you never accepted me. You never lived the way I asked you to live. And so if you're going to live in the presence of God, I hope this message touched you in some way uh, and, and give you some encouragement to live in the presence of God and get rid of those dead things out of your life. That's the, the gist of this message. So if you are uh, waiting to hear from God, if you're trying to get some things that there's a ministry that you want to do, there's some things that you know that you can help some people with, and got, if you haven't gotten all of the clarity on it, prepare yourself for what God is going to do in your life. God will tell you. God will come before you and let you know. It may not be some grand thing, as I mentioned in the beginning. God has something for everybody. If you don't know what that is, continue to get that relationship. Prepare yourself for what is to come. Because God will call upon you. And you need to be ready 
to respond appropriately, you need to recognize when he's calling to you. When he gets your attention, you need to know that that's God getting your attention and not just something happening. God is getting your attention. You know, you have, you've been running through life full speed, drinking and, and doing this and having a good time. You don't always get drunk. You're just drinking. And, but sometimes you do and you, you're smoking and you're doing all these other things and you're having wreck after wreck after wreck after wreck and accident, tearing up everything. And God is saying, I'm trying to get your attention to slow down. Whatever that thing is, could be your finances. You need to be able to slow down and hear what God is saying because when he gets your attention, Jonah, and he says, go to Nineveh and do this thing for me on my behalf. Uh, you don't have to do anything but just say this to me, say this to the people and move on. Don't try to sit there and be a judge and a jury. You need to be ready. Prepare yourself for what God has for you. And when you're getting prepared, get get an intimate relationship with God. Make sure that you know what he's saying. Be able to hear and respond to God and notice the things when he gets your attention. And then when he calls you particularly, you need to say, here am I. And then you need to make sure you get rid of all of those things that are just death, those things that don't bring life. Anything that doesn't bring life, you need to get rid of before you do what God has for you. God bless you and God keep you. We want to encourage you to come along tomorrow. We will have a guest speaker, Pastor Riley Baxter from Living Water Temple Church. We have a message for us. Uh, and so we want you to come along. That message is pre-recorded. We will not be coming live uh, because of some situations going on right now. And so we're going to have that message posted. And it will come up on your feed uh, on tomorrow at 10 o'clock Central Standard Time. Pastor Riley Baxter of Living Water Temple Church will deliver the message. And we want you to come in and hear what God has to say for us. We are celebrating our third year uh, in as New Beginnings House of Worship. And so Pastor Riley Baxter will bring us that message on tomorrow. Uh, we want to encourage you to continue to support this ministry and with your presence, with your time. And uh, if you have it to give, we, we would love that. We have some things that we're trying to accomplish this year with our scholarship program. And so uh, we are well on our way and we, would, we, we will be giving you more information on that to come. God bless you and God keep you as our prayer and have a wonderful day.